Buck, 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 buck. Buck, it just passed out past the crab apple thing. Doe's coming out towards me. I can't find it. Okay. Okay. First week in November, and another buck falls at the proving ground. You are the girl. Give me a hug, baby girl. Woo, you did good. Growing Deer TV is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Also by Ricottes, Trophy Rock, Muddy Outdoors, Non Typical Wildlife Solutions, Eagle Seed, Nikon, Winchester, Redneck Hunting Blind, Dead Downwind, Record Rack, Antler Dirt, Lacrosse Footwear, Scent Master, Blood Sport Arrows, and Prime Bows by G5. My wife Trace and I are very dedicated to raising our children to enjoying creation knowing who the Creator is, and being productive and honest citizens. You're almost perfect, probably. Usually your first two shots will be a little further apart because the barrel goes from being cold to hot. That, that changes how it adjusts. Shooting. It don't take much time. She's ready to go, she's ready <laughs> to go. Crap shooting. That is an outstanding group, Raleigh. Outstanding. You are, you, you shot a group smaller than a dime. Take your time. Great shot. Most of these important lessons can't be found in a textbook. And we've opted to use outdoor activities and primarily hunting as a way to reinforce these lessons. By the time you season and rode round, both our girls had shot a lot of rounds from the bench and hunting positions. They knew their weapon, they were confident in their shooting skills, and ready to have some fun. If you're taking some new shooters or youth shooters out to practice, make sure you got the appropriate safety equipment and what I call comfort equipment. I use a lead sled to take all the recoil out of rifle. That way they can concentrate on shooting and having fun and not worrying about the kick of a deer rifle. Some folks worry about going out and checking cameras right during season. That's not a worry for us here at Proving Grounds. You've heard me talk many times about MRI, most recent information, so we ran our trail cameras before you season to see if we could get a pattern. Today, AJ and I are out. We're gonna check the Reconics, do a little scouting, see which redneck the girls need to be in come Saturday morning. And we're really going to be paying close attention to our scent control today since the rut's getting close. We'll try to schedule checking our cameras in midday where deer probably won't be active where the cameras are located. And we wear lacrosse hip boots to really illuminate most of the scent we would put in that area. And we're like a ninja, just sliding in to get that data. After we pulled the cards and checked the pictures, we had a pretty good feeling Raleigh or Ray would have a chance of encountering a buck here at the Proving Grounds. A north wind is perfect to hunt out a red net blind we have on the south side of our largest food plot and feeding field that we call crab apple. I limit the hunting pressure on crab apple field and save it for when my children or my father have a chance to hunt. As the sun broke and got over the horizon, it was a beautiful morning with the leaves at about peak color here in the Ozarks. About mid-morning, two does and two fawns fed across the field. Raleigh had an antlers tag, but she was determined to wait for a buck on opening day. That buck never appeared, but Raleigh wasn't upset knowing she had more time to hunt. During the night, the wind shifted to be out of south and Raleigh and I went to a ridge top food plot called Boom Back. About mid-morning, we both noticed two deer at the very far edge of the field on a logging road that leads to the field. We identified them as a doe and fawn, and I certainly gave Raleigh to go ahead to take the doe if she wanted. She was gonna wait for an antlered buck during the early part of the season. And it wasn't long till I spotted antlers 
coming down that same logging road. It was a good looking two year old buck, but Raleigh made the choice to pass because it wasn't any larger than the buck she harvested last year. As often happens this time of year, the doe went in the woods and left the fawn in the field feeding. The young fawn fed within five yards of us and didn't know we were anywhere in the world crunching acorns and eating the broadside food plot mix. Seeing fawns by themselves in food plots during the first of November is a great sign that the chase phase of the rut has started. Oftentimes, does will abandon their fawns for 24 to 36 hours as they're tended by the buck and pair up later. So this time of year, if you start noticing multiple fawns in open areas or food sources without mature does with them, it's time to maybe think about hunting travel corridors and where bucks are going to be passing through as they're seeking does as the chase phase has started. That afternoon, my 11-year-old daughter, Ray, had the opportunity to hunt. Once again, a strong south wind was forecast, so Ray and I went to a redneck blind that's right between Tracy's Field and Blue Hope. As we were just starting to switch positions and get Ray oriented towards that field, a buck ran into the field and pushed a doe up in the woods while the fawn once again stayed in the field. See how she keeps looking back? Yeah. There's a good shot. Could you make that shot? Yeah. Okay. Are you solid? Are you stable? Yeah. Perfect. The fawn stayed in the field, as we've discussed earlier, and often occurs this time of year. The fawn would take a bite out of the food plot and look up toward the woods, telling me that the doe and that buck weren't far away. I told Ray to stay focused on that area, and I felt very confident we'd see that buck again. Finally, the fawn left the field, but I remained confident that sometime before dark, we'd see a buck cruising that area. I really like using the dead shot field pod, especially for taking younger kids hunting because they don't have to hold the gun up on the ready all the time and be tired and shaky before a shot presents itself. A little bit before dark, a fawn, I assume is the same one, re-entered Tracy's field. And not long after, a mature doe followed behind. Oh, that is a weird deer. No, it's not. There's another one. Buck, buck, buck. Buck, it just passed out past the crab apple thing. They're that. running each way. Oh, yeah. The doe's coming out towards the buck. Stay on the buck. Come on. I can't find it. No, he's coming. He's coming. Okay. Okay. It's behind the crab apple. Come up here and stop. It's okay. Okay. Stay to the other side. Crab apple. Oh, I can't get it. You nailed him. You I nailed got him. it. I Shoot got him. Shoot him again. Shoot him again. Right. I don't. Help me. Help me. Help me. Put me in. Move me in. You're good. Okay. Anywhere? Whenever you're ready. Okay. Hit him right in the neck, right? Hit him. Hit him. I tried to. You hit him. You hit him. I got him. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's going down. Okay. Down to there. Shoot him again. Shoot him. If you can hit him, shoot him, Ray. I think I might have got you him. You killed him, he's Ray. Dead. Okay. Multiple shots, but I think he's dead. I had all, you are the girl. Give me a hug, baby girl. Woo, you did good. Can I take these things off? Yeah, you can take your hearing protection off. You're the girl, Ray. Do you think he would've went down with the first one? Yep, he was definitely, went, you made a good shot right here on the first one. Uh-huh. Just, you're wise not to let him suffer. Okay. I don't like animals so I don't either, but he didn't, he didn't know what hit him, Ray. You hit him so hard. Let me, okay. you, you wanna tell mommy? Yeah. Hello. Hey, I got a buck. As soon as those calls were made, we scurried out of blind while the light was fading so Ray could get her hands on that buck. Eight-pointer! Eight-pointer! Scout, there you go. 
and then so it finally landed over here. So this is my first shot, that's my second shot, and in the bottom is my fourth, third shot. So. And I'm trying to find a doe, and you said, buck, buck. And I'm really searching to find a buck in the camera. And you just took over from there. Yep. And then he started running, and so then I had to wait until I stopped for just a bit. And then I shot him. Yep. And you made a great shot. I could see the bullet impact on the first shot. I knew it was great, but Daddy didn't want to drag that a long way, so I had to shoot again. Enjoying all the mystery and the pure pleasure of hunting, is where I hope all hunters can be, no matter how many bucks they've tagged in their career. That's your fourth deer mm -hmm. and biggest buck to date. Yep. Just like Ray and I, I hope you have some moments to go hunting this week and enjoy creation. And more importantly, find some time to be quiet and listen to what the creator is saying to you. Thanks for watching GrowingDeer.tv. This year, in addition to waving the flag, make sure you take time to thank a veteran Set them down, look them in the eyes, and tell them what a blessing they've been to our nation. You got our eyes closed? Well, I kind of in one of those interrogation rooms. Yeah, um, I was really excited about it. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Oh, really?